Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Workers across Kellogg production facilities go on strike in the United States. Tribal communities lead protest against coal mining expansion in India. WHO recommends broad use of the world's first vaccine against malaria. And on our final story, we take a look at thousands who face homelessness in Brazil as evictions soar under pandemic. We begin with the United States, where workers have shut down all cereal production facilities of the Kellogg Company. Organized by the Bakery, Confectionery, Tobacco Workers and Grain Millers Union, around 1,400 workers are on strike. Negotiations between the union and Kellogg have been ongoing for a year. The master contract for four BCTGM locals in Nebraska, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee expired on October the 5th. Workers have said that Kellogg has proposed an end to cost of living wage increases. It is also trying to expand an unequal tiered system of wages and benefits. Workers are reportedly forced to work 12 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. One person told Vice News that he had worked for two years with no weekends off. The company offered small pay bonuses and cookies as compensation. The Michigan, Pennsylvania and Nebraska plants reportedly also faced large COVID-19 outbreaks. BCTGM has said that Kellogg has threatened to outsource jobs if workers don't accept its proposals. Snack food companies like Kellogg, Frito-Lay, and Nabisco made huge profits during the pandemic. Workers across all three companies went on strike this year against abysmal working conditions. In our next story, we go to India, where a major protest is underway in the state of Chhattisgarh. Hundreds of tribals, farmers and activists are on a 330-kilometer march to the state capital. They are protesting the expansion of coal mining projects in the Hasdevaranya region. The area has one of India's largest contiguous stretches of dense forests, spanning over 420,000 acres. However, it also has over a billion metric tons of coal reserves, most of which lie under the forest. Hasdeo and nearby areas have been carved up into 18 coal mines. So far, four of these mines or blocks have been given to three state corporations. As reported by Article 14, all of them have given developer contracts to a multi-billion dollar private conglomerate. Over 18,000 acres of land and forest will be taken over for open cast mining. In 2009, the Hasdev forest was designated as a no-go zone. However, it was open to mining soon after. On October 2, 2021, villagers in the area held a mass rally demanding that the government cancel the mining projects. Mines have been approved despite fierce opposition by village assemblies since 2011. These communities will now reach the state capital on October the 13th to meet the governor and the chief minister. Moving on, the World Health Organization has endorsed the world's first malaria vaccine. Called Moskirisk, it was created by GlaxoSmithKline in 1987. The vaccine has been recommended for children across Africa. The WHO's decision is based on a study in Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi, which has been ongoing since 2019. 2.3 million doses of Moskirisk were administered to over 800,000 children. Prior to this, the vaccine was subject to clinical trials in seven African countries. Over 200 million cases of malaria and nearly 400,000 deaths are recorded worldwide per year. According to the WHO, 94% of all cases and deaths are recorded in Africa. Moskirisk has an effectiveness of 30% against severe cases of the disease. The vaccine has to be administered in four doses to children from the age of five months onwards. Children under the age of five form 67% of all malaria deaths. GlaxoSmithKline has committed 15 million doses each year up to 2028. According to a WHO study, 50 to 110 million doses will be required annually by 2030 if the vaccine is used in medium to high transmission areas. And for our final story, we go to Brazil, where 105 families in Sao Paulo are facing forced evictions. Around 400 people have been living in the Quixada's occupation in Cajamar since 2019. As reported by Brazil de Fato, 
the land has been left abandoned for 19 years before the settlement. Now a district judge has ruled that the families must vacate the area by December. If not, the land will be repossessed the next day with an authorization to use force. Meanwhile, any new construction on the land will incur a fine of 1,000 reals a day. The community that has settled in Keshada's occupation has been organized by Luta Popular. It has a community garden, a public library, and tutoring classes. By August 2021, Brazil recorded a 310% increase in the number of evicted families. According to the National Zero Eviction Campaign, 20,000 families have lost their homes. In June, a Supreme Court judge has banned eviction for six months or until the pandemic lasts. The judgment is due to expire on December 7th. The reposition of land in Keshada's occupation has been scheduled for the next day. That's all for today's episode. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel, visit our website on www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.